Hello, uh, my name is Lara. I'm one of the student doctors here. Can I please get your name and date of birth? Uh, my name is Benjamin, uh, born 3rd December 1995. Nice to meet you, Benjamin. Would you like to ask to examine the vessels in your body? It's going to involve me feeling around your tummy and then feeling for the pulses in your neck. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. Do you have any questions for me before we begin? Uh, is this going to hurt? No, not at all. But if, if you're ever in pain or if it's ever too comfortable, just let me know. Okay? All right. And do you have any pain at the moment? No, it's fine. Okay. So we can start the examination now. I'm going to ask you to please take off your shirt and lay down on the bed there for me. Is that okay? Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. Okay, then. So I'm going to start the examination now. I'll first start by raising the general inspection. Okay. And the patient appears comfortable at rest with no signs of distress. Now I'm going to move on to have a closer look at the abdomen. There appears to be no any visible scars or abdominal distension. There appears to be no visible bruises or any signs of portal hypertension such as catheter defects. And now I'm looking for any visible pulsation of the aorta. I can't appreciate visible pulsation of the aorta. Then, do you have anything in the abdomen at the moment? No, it's all good. Okay, so now I'm just going to feel around the abdomen, okay? Let me know if you have, uh, if you have any pain, okay? Alright. And now, Ben, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to press a bit deeper, okay? There are no any palpable masses detected. And now, Ben, I'm going to just have a feel of the blood big vessel in your abdomen, okay? To do that, you should go two centimeters above and to the left of the umbilicus. I can appreciate the pulsation. I can appreciate a pulsatile mass, but not a pulsatile expansile mass, so that's normal. And now, Ben, I'm going to listen using my stethoscope to your abdomen, okay? Sure. There are no renal or aortic breweries audible. I'll start again by doing another uh, inspection. There appears to be no hair loss, and the skin doesn't appear to be pale and shiny. Um, ben, I'm going to now have to look between the toes. Is that okay with you? It will be fine. Okay. Do you have any pain at the moment there? No, just cold. Okay, Ben. Do you have pain in, uh, in your hips here at the moment? Okay. I'm going to ask you to lift up your right leg for me, if that's okay. Okay, you can relax it. And then I'm going to ask you to do the same thing on the other side. Can you please lift it up for me? Okay. That's okay. There are no any visible scars or alterations, and there is no any visible muscle wasting or fasciculation. And now, Ben, I'm going to move on to take for the temperature. Okay. And it involves me placing both my hands at the same time and comparing the temperatures. Temperature is normal bilaterally. And now, Ben, I'm going to press down on the on your big toe to assess for the circulation. Is that okay? Go for it. Okay. One, two, three. Normal capillary reflux. Doing the same thing on the other side now. One, two, three, four, five. And that's normal capillary reflux. And then, now Ben, I'm going to feel around the ankles for any uh, swelling, okay? Alright. 
You can do that by getting around the medium of you. Dropping down for five seconds. No chance of getting edema. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side then, okay? So no sign of getting edema on that side as well. Okay then. And now I'm going to move on to have a few of the pulses in the leg. To begin with, I'm going to locate the dorsalis pedis pulse. To locate it, you draw an imaginary line from the medial malleolus all the way to the lateral malleolus. Halfway through, you draw another line running all the way down between the first and the second toes. And then one third the distance down, lateral to the extensor hallucis longus tendon, you can locate the pulse. And you push down against the navicular bone. And then when you appreciate the pulse, you go and feel for your own pulse to make sure that you're feeling the patient's pulse. If you're unable to appreciate the pulse, you can ask the patient to flex up the leg. Ben, can you please flex up the leg there for me? Thank you. I can appreciate the pulse. Okay, Ben, you can relax now. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. I can appreciate the pulse over here as well. Okay then, we move on to the posterior tibialis pulse. Moving on to posterior tibialis pulse, this pulse is located posterior and inferior to the medial malleolus. To locate it, you take your fingers to the heel and you drag them all the way up. You tuck your fingers behind and inferior to the medial malleolus and you push against it. And at the same time, you feel for your pulse. I can appreciate the pulse. Okay. Now bad, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I can appreciate the pulses on that side as well. Okay. And now bad, I'm going to move on to feeling the pulse behind uh, your knee. Okay. Um, to do that, first of all, do you have pain in your knee? Okay. Can you please flex the right knee for me? Okay. So to do that, you take both of your thumbs and you place them at the kneecap. You take your fingers and you roll them all the way back between the two heads of the gastrocnemius muscle and you push against the tibial plateau below the knee crease and you ask the patient to relax the knee. Can you please relax the bed down for me? This pulse is usually difficult to appreciate. I cannot appreciate the pulse. Okay, then you can relax it there. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Can you now flex it up for me? And now relax. I can appreciate the pulse. Now, Ben, uh, I will feel for the final pulse, which is the femoral pulse. Right. Uh, for that, would you mind pulling your pants a bit downwards for me, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, to locate this pulse, you locate the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine, and then you draw a line between them. Halfway through that line, you should be able to appreciate the femoral pulse as you push down against the head of the femur. I can appreciate the pulse, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. can appreciate the pulse on that side as well. Um, if the patient was diabetic and you wanted to perform a diabetic foot exam, in addition to the things we did earlier, this is how you proceed. Ben, so this is a device called the microtonin device, which is going to assess the sensation. It should not be painful. This is how it's going to feel. And now I'm going to put it at your sternum, okay? This is how it feels, okay? Can you close your eyes? Do you feel that? Yeah. Okay, that's how it's going to feel over there. Yeah. It shouldn't be painful or uncomfortable, okay? Yeah. You take the microfilament and you push it all the way up, and now you will assess the patient's pressure point. Make sure that the microfilament is bent to 90 degrees. Can you feel that, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Can you close your eyes there for me? 
Yeah. Yeah. And then can you feel it on the other side? Yeah. Does it feel the same? Yeah. Okay. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. How about that? Yeah. And did it feel the same? Yes. Okay. Can you feel that? Yes. And that? Yeah. Did it feel the same? Yeah. Can you feel ah, that? Yes. And yeah. that? Did it feel the same? Yes. Did you feel that? Yes. What about that? Yes. And did it feel the same? Yes. And for the last position, can you feel that band? Yeah. Okay. And can you feel it there? Yeah. And does that feel the same? Yeah. Okay. For the exam band, we're going to use this vibration device, okay? So that's how it's going to feel. Close your eyes there, can you see? Can you feel that? Can yeah. you feel the vibration? Yeah. Okay. And did it stop? Yeah, it stopped. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Can you feel that band? Yeah. Can you feel the vibration? Yes. Okay, now let me know when it stops. I think it stops, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Can you feel that band? Yeah. Okay, and now let me know when it stops. There you go. Okay. And now, if the patient's sensation was intact in both modalities that I just tested, that would conclude the exam. If they were not, you move on to check for the reflexes. They were both intact. Uh, now, Ben, for the final part of the exam, I'm going to perform a test called the Burger's test. Right. This test involves me lifting both of your legs up and then moving them to the side. Okay? Sure. Okay. And I'm just going to confirm with you one more time. Do you have any pain anywhere in your legs? Or no. Okay. okay. And now, Ben, I'm going to proceed by raising, lifting your legs up. Alright. And as I do so, I'm paying attention to the color of the heel, noting any color. And then when you note color, note the angle that the color uh, was, was uh, evident at. And now, Ben, I'm going to hang your legs to the side. Can you sit up for me, please? Okay, put my leg up on the left side. Sit there. Okay. And at this point, I'll be looking for reactive hyperemia. Uh, okay, Ben, thank you very much. This concludes our exam. Sure. You can get a success now, okay? Today I examined Ben, a 23-year-old patient. My examination reveals no peripheral stigmata of peripheral vascular disease. To complete the exam, I would use a Doppler ultrasound for any pulses that I was not able to appreciate and measure his ankle brachial index.